The 2024 St. Patrick's Day event is back. Here's what you need to know going into this event. First, you can play this event your way, whether you want to grind out the minigame all day or just to sit back and relax a bit. You'll get tons of rewards however you play. Second, there will be two mini challenges running during this event. We'll talk about these more later, but you should be able to complete, or mostly complete, them for some pretty nice rewards. Luckily, these weren't too difficult on beta. And third, if you place in at least the Bronze League, you get a building that gives fragments of the main building. However, this building does get better as you place in higher leagues. There are several new buildings you can win, and the best part is that they're all green. The main building is the Celtic Tavern, and this guy is big. I'm talking 6x5 big, and it needs a road. It's only 9 levels total, including a silver and gold level, and gives some pretty decent rewards. A ton of population and happiness, a variety of army boosts, including quite a bit of defense for the expeditions, as well as coin and supply boosts. In terms of productions, it'll give lots of forge points, goods, and the standard 3 fragments of a selection kit for 2 other new buildings. The selection kit it makes fragments of lets you choose between the Sheep Shire and the Rune Garden. The Sheep Shire is only 3x1 but provides army boosts, forge points, goods, and 2 heavy units. If you use heavies, I'd be targeting this building. It doesn't even need a road. The Rune Garden is 1x3 and gives more army boosts, goods, forge points, guild goods, and some blueprints of your age and below. You can pick up a Platinum upgrade for the Archdruid Hut from last year's event, which boosts the army stats, adds many more forge points and goods, removes the random production of coin boosts in favor of just giving them as a normal production, and gives random production of the selection kit for the Druid trees or their respective upgrades. The upgrades give the trees some more productions and turn them pink. They do all still need roads, however. We also have the Celtic Glassworks, which is only available from the boxes after completing towns. It has two levels, gives a decent amount of happiness, army boosts, forge points, and goods, but also has a random production for finished special productions and finished goods production items, averaging two finished special productions item fragments per day. That's on par with the Jester stage from the Fellowship event, except that this building doesn't need a road. Last but not least is the Apothecary of the Highlands. This is a standard Gold League building that produces fragments for the Celtic Tavern, except for the fact that it's not limited to just the Gold League. You can get it at as low as Bronze, where it provides 5 fragments of the Tavern Selection Kit, Silver League brings that up to 10, and Gold League gives 20 fragments. They also all provide a good amount of army boosts, forge points, and goods. Alright, but what about the minigame? It's the same minigame as before, but I'll run through a brief overview if you've not played it yet. On the right side of the screen, you've got factories that provide goods, and you need to click them to start productions that pile up on this side of the screen. You can use the ship to collect these productions and bring them to the festival on the left side of the screen, which then converts them into shamrocks, which you can then use to level the various factories higher to produce more goods to produce more shamrocks. You can also use pots of gold, which you get from the event quests, in order to buy and upgrade managers that produce goods for you. As you play, you complete tasks, which give you progress towards the grand prizes. Collect enough shamrocks, and you can move on to the next town, which gives you the option to open reward boxes using pots of gold. Then you move on to the next town and start the whole thing over again. You can get some rewards from completing tasks, but the major sources of rewards are the grand prizes and those reward boxes at the end of towns. The first reward box is free, then they get progressively more expensive until you open 6, at which point you get a Celtic Glasswork selection kit and the costs reset a bit. Each slot of the rewards has different options that you can receive, but the order you receive those rewards is random. The first slot can contain some various consumable items. The second contains either the level 1 Celtic Glassworks or the upgrades for the Druid Trees with various odds. The Glassworks has a 20% chance of appearing. The third can contain the Druid Hut Selection Kit or the Level 2 Trees of Patience or Vitality. The Druid Hut Kit has about a 50% chance of appearing. The fourth contains a premium building with various odds. Slot 5 has goods, forge points, or medals with various odds. And Slot 6 can contain either the Privateer's Boathouse, Animal Crossing, or Chocolate Tree Selection Kit. If you want one of the specific rewards and don't care about the Glasswork Selection Kit for opening all boxes, open the boxes individually. However, if you want the Glasswork Selection Kit, open boxes using the discount to save some pots of gold. The last new thing with this event are the boosters. 
You start with one of each. The Swift Sham savings can reduce the cost of moving to the next town from 8.4 quadrillion to only 6.3 quadrillion shamrocks. Use this one whenever you wish, as there's no real benefit to waiting to use it. The Quick Promotion Booster allows you to upgrade your managers one level for free. Be careful when leveling managers as after level 1, the button splits and it is easy to accidentally use the quick promo. You generally want to use these on the most expensive manager levels to save your pots of gold. However, these are also quite useful in the mini challenges to complete quests. The Time Warp Booster lets you skip 2 hours ahead for free instead of paying 200 pots of gold. You want to use these during the long waiting times of this event, but may also want to use these in the mini challenges to complete the quests. All the strategy in this event comes down to completing as many tasks per town as cheaply as possible, and then whether or not to open the boxes at the end of each town. The good news is that you don't have to worry about strategies. I've got three options for you. The first is the simplest, and is what I recommend if you either want to keep your time spent on the minigame to a minimum, or want the most free glassworks possible. All you need to do is complete 7 towns in order to reach 200 tasks in the grand prizes and you'll secure yourself the level 7 Celtic Tavern and at least 5 Celtic Glassworks kits. This strategy only requires you to complete a town every 3 days and is pretty laid back. You should be able to safely complete the mini challenges both times, which will get you some extra rewards like finish all special productions items. The second strategy is a little bit more work, as you'll need to complete 10 towns, but here you'll reach 300 tasks. Doing so gives you the platinum upgrade for the Druid Hut for free, and you'll still be able to secure at least 3 Celtic Glassworks kits, probably 4 thanks to the pots of gold you can get from incidents. Here you have about 2 days to complete each town, and also should be able to complete the mini challenges fully. The third is the most work, and will have you completing towns as quickly as possible to try and get the most tasks for both far progress in the grand prizes, and securing your position in a higher league. You'll be opening no end-of-town boxes other than the free ones, so don't expect too many Celtic Glassworks. If you're fast enough, you should be able to get through 19 or more towns for free, and secure close to 600 tasks, which should get you close to 2 Celtic Taverns. Any kits you don't get will be finished by the Silver or Gold League buildings, depending on where you place. You'll only want to complete most of the mini-challenges with this strategy, but we'll talk about those later. But what about the minigame itself? How do we figure out the best way to do tasks? Well, I've got a spreadsheet for that. You simply pick the town you're on and check off the tasks as you complete them. Recommendations for how to level buildings and managers are included. If you don't know what town you're on, you can find out by inputting your current tasks into the aptly named tool and it'll tell you. The spreadsheet also includes a tool for tracking whether you're on schedule for completing towns based on the amount you wish to complete, and can even help you create a custom strategy to maximize the rewards you specifically want to get. A link to copy this spreadsheet is in the description below. You will need to make a separate copy for each world that you play the event on. The best part is that it works on both browser and mobile, so no matter how you play the game, you can use the spreadsheet. It's designed specifically so that you can put it to the side of the screen and focus on the game. I'll make a video dedicated to going over all the spreadsheet's features, and we'll link it below as well. If you don't want to use the spreadsheet, FOE Helper has some tools for the minigame as well, but of course, that does only work on browser. Now, what about those mini challenges I mentioned? You can win Glassworks kits, Epic kits, and tons of the boosters, but there's one small drawback. Completing the full 32 quests will mean you have to pay close to 1,600 pots of gold. However, there's a trick. If we only complete 30 of the 32 quests, we can actually come out ahead on pots of gold, making 770 pots from each mini challenge. That's an extra 2 towns worth. You'll notice that you have 4 quests at the same time for the mini challenges. These form 4 mini quest lines of 8 quests each. Two of these will pertain to the guild expeditions and should be easy enough to complete. These give tons of pots of gold and even pagan harvest selection kits. However, the other two quest lines pertain to the event's minigame. The first asks you to level managers and complete tasks, and the second asks you to use time skips. Overall, our strategy is this. Complete the expeditions-related challenges within the two days at your own pace. Work on both of the event-related challenges at the same time. You'll need to use the boosters you get from one to complete the other, and vice versa. However, we're only going to complete six of the eight quests relating to time skips. Otherwise, it gets too expensive. 
From those six quests, we get 10 quick promotion items which level managers for free, and we'll use these to complete the tasks and managers questline. You need all your factory managers leveled to 4, and your festival and shipyard managers leveled to 5, so this is the chart of the best levels to use those quick promotion items on. Note that this is from my spreadsheet, so you can just follow it there too. Additionally, you want to use the time warp boosters to complete the quest lines asking for time skips. Each time warp item counts as a 2 hour time skip. The best part is that if you're completing towns at least once every 2 days, you shouldn't have to go out of your way to complete this mini challenge like you might have in the wildlife event. On beta, these started on Tuesdays after the first week of the event, so most likely March 5th and 12th on live servers. I'll send out notifications on my Discord server once we know for sure. If you plan on spending during this event, try to do so by spreading out your spend. For example, instead of rushing one town with pots of gold, upgrade your managers a bit more on multiple towns. It's all about consistent play, whether you spend or not. On beta, Gold League ended at 784 tasks, which is about 22 to 23 towns worth. Keep that in mind if you're going for the higher leagues, but it will depend on your world. That's all for this video, but I will be making a separate video on how to use the spreadsheet. If you want to learn more about the minigame itself, I made a video about the Fellowships minigame, which is the same, but just has different art. All of this will be linked down below. Join my Discord server to discuss the event and strategies, and as always, I'll see you all next time.